What if you knew, right? Now I'm going to tell you some good news and bad news. The good news is you do. You know. And the bad news is you know. All right? Bow your heads with me as we open God's word this morning. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your great love for us. Lord, I thank you that we know you have not made it a secret, but you've made plain in your word what's coming in this world, what we face in the future, the hope that we have. And Lord, you know the danger, both for us and for others. So I pray that with your spirit today, you might speak to our hearts in these few moments, that we might have a desire to know you more, to do your bidding in carrying the message we have to the world that's soon to end. We thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, man. 9-11. How many know? 9-11. Come on, put your hands up. You know about 9-11. All right. Most everybody but the children. How many of you are alive 9-11? You know where you were when you heard. You'll never forget, right? You remember the flags coming out, right? You remember the cars going down the road and like, just like before a big football game or something, they had those flags, only this time, what kind of flags were they? American flags. Flags representing the United States of America. 9-11, a morning like this, a morning like any other. Beautiful day. I remember it well. I was in my office putting books in a box. I was in Shelbyville, Kentucky, and we were moving to Clarksville, Tennessee. And I was putting the books in the box. My wife had the TV on in, in, the, in the dining area, and she was also packing boxes there in the kitchen. And she called me, come see this. And one of the planes, had hit one of the towers, right? And while we were watching, here comes the other plane and hit that, that tower. What if you had been in New York City that day? What if you knew? What did I say? What if you knew that this morning, and you even knew the time, that there was going to be a plane hit that tower and then another plane hit the other tower and that in a few hours those towers were going to come crumbling down and thousands of people would be killed. What if you knew? Would you have done something different that day? Would you have eaten breakfast and, and had your worship and or maybe had your worship and eaten breakfast. You know, some of us do it that way, right? W would you have just gone on about your work and said, well, you know, I sure, sure hated about those people that are going to die today. I mean, that's terrible what's going to happen. W would you maybe have turned on the TV and been glued to it? You might have called in and said, you know, I'm not coming to work this morning. There's something exciting happening on TV. That's absurd, isn't it? What would you have done? Somebody said warning. How would you have done that? You know, here's the oldie, businessman, getting ready to go down to his office. One of those towers or a building right nearby. How would you have warned him? You don't even know him. You don't know where he lives? What would you have done? 
Somebody help me. You knew. How would you have warned him? Pardon? Go to his building and tell him don't go in there. Okay? There's a fatalistic move. I'm just being straight, okay? If the building's going to crash, you're going in there. Or to there, right? Oh, you go before it's going to crash. Okay? But I understand that right at the last minute, people were going in. Okay? But that's a good one. What would you do? What if you knew? Pray. Pray. Okay? God can and does answer prayer, do miracles on our behalf, right? All right? Hmm. Now, if I'm Ildi's wife, and he was killed in that building, and I, and I found out that you knew. And you say to me, well, you know, I was praying that morning, because I knew. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm running through some scenarios, okay? I'm trying to make us think a little bit. Because we have a message. It's a message of warning. Judgment is coming upon this earth, Right? Do we believe that? How many believe that? Here. It's here. Somebody says it's here. No, it, it's surely not here. We're sitting here in, in church today just worshiping and fellowshipping and having a good time, right? But it is, it is near. Even, the scripture says what? At the door. At the door. What if you knew? And then I said that's the good news is you do know. You can be prepared for what's coming upon this earth. You can prepare your heart. You can prepare your family. You can prepare your neighbors and friends, right? You have a moment. You have a time to give a warning, to give a message, to give even, in fact, hope. There is a way out. There is salvation. You can be saved. Now, some might say, well, people aren't going to listen. You know, if you go and tell them, hey, don't go to work today, the building's going to fall, some people are going to laugh at you. Some people are going to say, what in the world was in your punch this morning? Right? They're just going to think you're stir crazy. Others might listen, right? You don't know what their response is going to be. Now, let me ask you something. How can you get the most effective response? Who is the most likely to listen to you if you give them a warning? Pardon? Friends? People that know you? Family? Right? All right. Something to think about. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 comes right after Amazingly, Hebrews chapter 11, right? And in Hebrews chapter 11, we have a, a list of folks who have given a testimony, some with their very lives, right? They have been faithful even unto, somebody say it, death, all right? And Jesus, in fact, Gave his life, right? So it goes there and, and gives the list in Hebrews chapter 11. And Hebrews chapter 12 says, wherefore, you know, since you have all this list, since we've given you this history lesson of what's taken place down through the centuries and those who have been, been faithful, all right? Seeing we also, he says, are compassed. What's that mean? We're, we're surrounded by, we're surrounded by all these, what does he say? Cloud of witnesses. All right? 
If he said witnesses, that might be how many? Two or a few. But he says there's a cloud. What does that mean? I mean, there's, there's just lots of witnesses here. All right? And then he goes on and he says, with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's not a small cloud. This is a cloud, a massive cloud, all right? So what does he say do? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us so that we can do what? Sit still? Sleep? <laughs> he says you lay it aside so that you can run. Run, run, and then he kind of <laughs> puts it where we live. I hadn't noticed this before till the other day when I was looking. It says run with patience. You see, if he says run, that means I might just be dashing out there like a fire is already in the building, right? But he says run with what? That means there's going to be a running and a running and a persistent ongoing running, right? Okay? Because see, although we know, we don't know what? The day or the hour. We know what's going to happen. We know it's going to happen soon. But we don't know the day or the hour. So we have to start waking up. Is that what he says? Somebody help me. What does he say do? Run. Run. All right? Looking where? Unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now I have a young friend. We started Bible lessons. I, I got acquainted with her a few months ago. I, I have tried to be of assistance where I could and try to build a relationship. And we were having trouble getting Bible studies going, you know, trying to get the time when she's available, when I can be there and, and we could give a, give a Bible study. I told her, you know, she asked her if she would like to, to study the Bible and she said she would. But then we couldn't get it together. It took, took a couple months. And finally, you know, I, I had known her a while before I invited her to, to have Bible studies. But finally, uh, she needed transportation to get somewhere. She called me up, can you take me? Okay, so I go get her to take her. And while we're going, we have about 25 minutes or so to drive. I got that Bible study in. <laughs> Amen. All right. I had told her some things to read, some things to look at. And so she's, she's done that, read it. I'd ask her once in a while, hey, have you read it yet? Well, I haven't yet. And then, and then finally. And so she's read it now. And so we're going along. What in the world is, is an old gray-headed man? doing trying to tell some young lady about changes needed in her life what in the world would I need to be doing when maybe I could be retired right and relaxed and resting back home enjoying that watermelon came out of the garden right no we need to be vigilant faithful we have a message that, that is a message of life and death. And I see her life going the wrong way. There, there are choices already she's made that bring hardship into her life. She needs hope. And guess what? I have it. Don't you? You know, we sing that song. We have this hope. Hope in what? The coming of the Lord. Things are not going to remain as they are today. They're going to change, right? 
And it's going to be so wonderful we can't even imagine. We can get a little glimpse of it. We'll go back and look at the Eden story of the creation. What God did is he brought us into being. And we can look ahead into Revelation. It says he's going to be a, create a new heaven and a new earth. We're in dwelleth what? Righteousness. And we can look with horror at all the things. You know, just the other day, I mean, like on the news, it was 10 or 15 killings. I mean, one day, different places, all over the place, somebody just killed somebody. You know, there were stabbings and, and shootings. And uh, you hear that stuff? Somebody says, no, I don't listen to the news. Look, I don't dwell on it, all right? And I'm not there every time the news comes on, but I need to know what's going on in my world, right? We need to be aware. We don't need to have our hands in the sand, heads in the sand and thinking all is well when it isn't. And we need to know that there are people out there who are suffering, that, that sin is killing people today, right? All around. And some of these, many of these, are going to Christless graves. They've never heard the good news, the hope that we have, right? Now, there's no way in the world I can warn everybody. I don't have a forum to tell the whole globe what's happening and what's going on. But I'll tell you what. I want to be able to tell everybody that I can. The people that I meet, I want them to know there's something. Now, not everybody wants to hear. You know, I was at the fair booth, and we're sharing books and, and literature. And, and you know, it's amazing to me how many people don't cook anymore. In fact, there are a few folks I'd like to have their wallet. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this covetously, but they said to me that they could eat out cheaper than they could cook. And I'm going to tell you, I can fix them some meals and bank that money <laughs> that they're giving McDonald's. <laughs> and they're going to eat a lot better than they eat out there, right? And if they're eating well, they're spending even way more money, right? Okay. But anyway, I'm saying not everybody wants what we're sharing. Not everybody's going to listen. Some people are going to think you're crazy. But I got news for you. I don't care what they think about me in that sense. Amen. All right? Because I know what God's word says. And I know his word is sure, right? And so, we want to be ready. You know, the, the uh, disciples, and I'm going to close with this here. This is going to be very brief today. The disciples had heard Jesus teach. The disciples had all the stuff. They had the hope, right? And yet, here they were in the upper room worrying about what? You know, it reminds me a lot of the church I go to sometime. It's probably not this one, right? <laughs> we're we're cause, cause so concerned about who's who and what's what, and, and, you know, whether my opinion matters, right? That we forget to be kind and loving, and we forget that our real purpose is to tell the world the hope that we have, right? And to try to encourage as many others to spread the same. What if one Sabbath we came together in one accord with one purpose, with one work? What if we knew and we know for sure that we know? And that though we might not change the whole outlook, we might be able to change it for some people, right? There are even people who would welcome a warning. That's almost unimaginable, isn't it? You know, the scripture says, cry aloud, spare not, right? We don't know. Now, if we had the message, let's just suppose for a minute. And we're here at 9-11, right? The, the building's going to crash today. And so, I'm going to be a silent witness. <laughs> I'm not going down there today. And people can see I'm not going down there, so they'll know not to go down there, right? Now, I'm not denying that we ought to have a witness, right? And that our lives and our, our, our living ought to be a testimony. 
But we're living in a day and age when it needs to be more than a silent witness. There are some things that we need to cry out about. When the house is on fire, you don't just walk out quietly and hope somebody notices. Right? That's not the time for silent witness. When the house is on fire, it's time to what? Scream fire at the top of your lungs and run from the building, right? You and I need to be running from some things. We need to be staying away from some stuff completely and letting people know out loud why it is. We're not doing those things, okay? We need to be encouraging with all that's within us that people might be getting ready for the soon coming of the Lord. The destruction is coming upon this world. The apostle said, we're witnesses. We're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who for the joy that was set before him. What? He endured the cross. Can we not endure a little shame? A little reproach? A little ridicule? He says, despising the shame, and he sat down where? At the right hand of the Father. Don't we believe he's there today for us? Amen. Amen. And then he says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest what? You be wearied and faint in your minds. Don't let that happen to you. What if you knew? May God help us to use the knowledge we have to, to share the message, not of doom, but a message of what? Hope and assurance of wonderful things God has in store for us and anyone else, whosoever will, right? Let him come.